We have to make sure that the politicians are held accountable. Every administration had the ability to put a ban on asbestos. When it comes to asbestos, it really is about power, money, uh, and politics. Good morning, everyone. I hope you have a big cup of coffee because you're going to need it today. It's a jam-packed, fabulous conference um, of amazing speakers, as always. So I'm Linda Reinstein. I'm the co-founder of the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization. And on behalf of our independent nonprofit, we'd like to welcome you today. So for 14 years, ADO has been a stakeholder in Congress, with other governments, with trade unionists, and of course, the asbestos victims community. It's abundantly clear, or it was also abundantly clear to Doug Larkin and myself when we co-founded ADAO, that if we could bring education, advocacy, and community together, we could work to prevent exposure to then eliminate deadly diseases. So we encourage you to get social. I used to think it was rude when somebody would be on their phone and I might be talking. Now I, I think you're not paying attention if you're not snapping a picture or sending a tweet. Really? So it's terrific. I mean, how does a little nonprofit with a small budget working from a home office with no staff do what we do? So social media is a large component uh, to give us, oh, goodness, is that, maybe that's Mavis. Hang on, Mavis. That's a social media queen. So we're going to run through a little bit before we have an international message from Mavis. So use the hashtag 2018ADAO. And if you have any big questions, Robin in the front and Risha are two of my fabulous interns here uh, who understand social media can also help you. So here we go. It is not easy to come together as a family. We are a family without Doug Larkin. And tragically, in June, Doug lost his battle with ALS. He was a fierce leader and visionary, and most of all, a friend. So with great sadness, I want to take a minute and just recognize Doug's leadership, commitment, and fortitude to banning asbestos, which brings us to where we are today. Well, we've come a long way since 2005. Patrick Morrison was with us in Washington, D.C. for the first conference. Barry Castleman, Marilyn Amento, Dr. Richard Lemon, of course, my daughter and my husband. And you can see this group picture. We are just a simple bunch of folks recognizing that asbestos was a problem and we wanted to do something about it. And 14 years later, we stand in front of you in Washington, D.C. again. And obviously, that's Joey Amento, if anybody was at the museum and saw Joey down on his knees. And of course, Emily's missing some teeth. Um, so, in front of you, you have a beautiful 138-page program. Uh, please write your names in front of them, because if you do lose them, we can't replace them. They're very expensive for us. But they are absolutely beautiful, filled with tributes and honorary pages and all kinds of information. Um, we're live streaming, so if somebody couldn't join you today, just send them an email and tell them to go to our website. They can actually join in right now and watch all of us make presentations around the world. And we'll be live streaming from 8.30 today, obviously, um, through the awards tonight and then again tomorrow. Joey, we, you missed your picture. You were just on stage and mentioned. That's a way to embarrass a kid. Thanks for coming, Joey. So we've got four great events. Um, we obviously had the museum tour yesterday. And where else but Washington, D.C. should we really be talking about freedom of speech? and fake news, and real news, most importantly. So I think it was perfect timing for a tour to the museum, which is a very important museum um, to me personally. But I think you'll recognize after you hear from some of our other speakers, especially Chris Graham, talking about the importance of the media. For those of you who knew and loved Andy Schneider, like I did, that was what his voice did. He was a fierce advocate for the truth. He didn't write for us, he wrote the truth. Um, and in keeping with Andy's legacy, there will be a, a lecture uh, this afternoon all about from a, a key journalist who's gonna be recognized. That's Chris Graham. Um, 10 countries, look around. Somebody next to you probably has a different color passport and it's okay. It's okay, we don't build walls. Um, so 10 countries here, <laughs> yes, 
10 countries, Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Finland, Turkey, United, United Kingdom, and United States. Actually, that's nine. But, um, but on, on the column, it looks like 10. Anyway, it's, it's great to have an international conference. And it's also great because we're a nonprofit. To bring international leaders and to have many of you pay for your own way, your hotel expenses, or for our sponsors to allow us to scholarship you in, that's a huge undertaking. And we're so proud and delighted to be able to do that. So it just gets better and better. Patrick Morris, Morrison is sitting to my right. He's going to deliver today's keynote address. And Eric Yonke is at the second table back here. He will deliver Sundays. Two very powerful voices in our asbestos struggle. Chris Graham, as I mentioned earlier, uh, he's sitting in the back. He'll deliver uh, uh, Andy, the, the first Andrew Schneider Memorial Lecture at about 2 o'clock, but please check your agenda. Um, we can't do this without sponsorships and donations. We just couldn't. So in the effort to save time but not minimize our gratitude, we'd like to recognize Motley Rice, Simon, Henley, and Conroy, and of course, early Lucarelli, Sweeney, and Mize and Coton. Could we first ask Simmons to stand up? I'm trying to see if they're here. I know Sarah was here with her baby. Todd, maybe they haven't come yet. Uh, anybody from Motley Rice? I know there's Andrew and Pam. Could Motley Rice, could you stand? Do me a favor, stand. It's hard, yep. Thank you. And Jennifer Lucarelli is going to be joining us, but I haven't seen her yet this morning, and she, is a, she represents um, a silver sponsor. So thank you to our sponsors for allowing us to do our work. On a side note, we don't do anything for lawyers. We are not their voice box. We do not make legal referrals. We do not work for the plaintiff's bar. We're an independent organization, and that's how we get our work done in Washington, because we're the real McCoy, and we have our strong and independent messages. So today, you're going to have lunch sponsored by the Simmons, Hanley, and Conroy firm. And then tomorrow, you have a lovely brunch sponsored by Motley Rice. Well, again, it's not just uh, sponsors that help us. We have many donors that will have fundraising events um, and make just donations from their family. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask everyone to stand, please, who's made a donation that's here. We have the Kearns family. If you'd please stand so we can thank you. We have Heather Von St. James, please stand. We have the Matt Miller family. Mark Caitlin is a speaker and also an active supporter. And we also have Renee and the Halls and Kim Hoover and others, and of course, Lisa Crandall, who made yesterday's new museum tour possible, but they're not here today. So what does it take on the leadership side to make ADO tick and work for 14 years? We have our board here, and I'd like to have our leadership please stand all at once for one single applause so we can thank you. We have Kim Kimberly Kachekny, Ellen, Ellen, who you know is my partner who runs around and donates so much time. Um, Lori Rice is unable to be here, and Ellen. So please, the board, raise your hand so that we can thank you. I saw Jordan Zivon, our national spokesperson and a, a celebrity co-chair slip in this morning. I don't know if Jordan is still here. Are you Jordan? Maybe he came down for breakfast. But Jordan gives so much, much more than his voice. Um, so thank you, Jordan. Um, and then Celeste is in the back. She's this quiet angel. Yeah, everybody's like, no, stand up. You don't get away with that. No project is too big for Celeste. She always says, yes, dear, we can do that. And she does more than you could ever imagine. Um, our science advisory board is hugely important. We can't write blogs and produce educational materials unless we're factually correct. And it's important for us. No fake news, no fake facts, only the real deal. But I believe that when we go to Congress, when we take people like Dr. Oliver, Dr. Councilman, Lemon, and Frank, and Flores, 
It means a lot when you have science behind your message. So I would like to ask our Science Advisory Board co-chairs to first stand, Dr. Richard Lemon and Arthur Frank. <laughs> then we have Dr. Brad Black, Barry Castleman, Dr. Flores, Dr. Harbert, Dr. Markowitz, Dr. Oliver. That, if you're a Jew, that's almost a minion. We've got our entire... <laughs> We have our entire science advisory board here, so could they all please stand? Well, with, it, with, the more, with the more awareness that we raise, the more questions we get. And people like Brent Kynock and Tom Lobenthal and Tony and others recognize that when we raise awareness throughout the community, people have questions. What happened in my child's school? Who do I call? I think it could be in my home. So we have to obviously respond to those messages. So um, I want to introduce, Brent Kynock is unable to be here and Christine Winter, but Mark Caitlin is here, so please stand. Claire Deacon is from South Africa, not here, but very involved. Tom Lobenthal, John Newquist, Tony Rich, and Mark Winter. So thank you to our Science Advisory Board. So this may feel like it's a bit long, but when can we thank our people? I mean, this is really the only time, and they are such quiet volunteers. Nobody does this for fame or fortune and no one does it for money. So they're out here helping me religiously to get this conference together. So I'm gonna ask in a group way, would all of our conference committee members please stand, volunteers, interns, please stand. Uh, we have obviously Kim, Ellen, Herman, who's not here, we love Herman. Uh, we have Jessica who did graphics, Jordan, uh, I'm trying to read. Um, Tony Rich does a photography. Brent, uh, and keep going down the list. We've got Dick, Dick Lemon and Arthur, of course, Celeste. But our volunteers at the very bottom, not that they're unimportant by any means, but you've got people like the Matt Muellers and Bob and Laura, and please don't make me read something blurred, and Betty and, and Robin, and of course our interns, Tara, Danielle, Risha, and Nicole. Would you all just stand at once so we can thank you? And Courtney, thank you. I don't think, it's blurred from up here. When you're over 60, it's really hard to see. <laughs> Um, hazards of aging. Um, my dear friend and colleague, Earl Daughter, I love you. And I get to share you with your wife in a sweet photographic way. Um, we have many conversations to plan for this um, poster and to produce the poster and to talk about what the message could be and how could it resonate with a global audience. And Earl is really amazing. So please make your way back to the exhibit that he and his dear wife, Deborah, set up last night. Um, it is really magnificent with the badges. Earl will explain more later on. But Earl, stand so we can see you and thank you. This poster is particularly close to my heart. Um, you'll see in the upper left corner an amazing man who we're recognizing today, Pat Morrison. That was a couple years ago with the World Trade Center behind him. Pat and those firefighters run in, race in, save our lives, but are also hugely exposed to asbestos. Um, on the bottom half, we have dear Dr. Raja Flores, who is a strong ADO supporter. Um, and that's basically, Earl has named this, firefighters, emergency responders, and caregivers. And we want Congress to recognize that legacy asbestos exposure is important to evaluate for risk, and that is, is, it, is, it is dangerous to public health, enormously dangerous. So we're fighting to have the EPA do their job and recognize and evaluate the true risk of asbestos and also the Libby Amphibole. Honorees, there are 11 names here, they're in your program. Uh, Senator Jeff Merkley, Congresswoman Bonamici will accept by video. Patrick Morrison is here to accept his award. EWG is being honored. Jack McCulloch, 
uh, Huka T Dr. Takala with the Dr. Selikoff Award. We have Chris Graham and his partner, who is not here, to be honored with the Andy Schneider Memorial Award. Daniel, who I think is sitting in here. Daniel, Eric, Anna Marie, and Rachel, posthumously, will be honored with the Alan Reinstein Award. Would our honorees please just quickly stand so we can thank you and congratulate you. So you can tell that we do something differently at ADO. We use art and advocacy. I can tell you where the papers are and how to find how many people might have died in 2016. Yes, you're right, Riley Jean. But that's not enough. It's Riley's story, it's Mike's story, it's our stories that make a difference. So we use art and advocacy. So tonight at the reception, you can meet Jordan Zivon, Earl Daughter, who's a photographer. We've got writers like Chris, Jam, Chris Graham and journalists and filmmakers like Daniel. So we all come together with our own specialty about having to raise awareness. And Jordan's gonna perform tonight. His father uh, is the late Warren Zivon, who wrote um, Keep Me In Your Heart, Will, Will, yeah, thank you. Of London and lawyers, guns, and money. So you'll get, you'll be entertained but enlightened, and hopefully very motivated. Ellen in the back and my beautiful daughter Emily uh, would love to uh, get you a ticket for dinner. If you didn't make arrangements, please see them. Um, it's $100, but includes a reception, and obviously it's a way that we can honor our honorees and make this extra special. Tomorrow we have brunch uh, at 9.30, and it's, it's really a wonderful part of our program, and it's the closing part where we, we honor and remember those we've lost, but we really unite and feel our fight in the future so that we can leave this conference feeling really tight with our community um, and inspired and encouraged to keep going. Special thanks to McConey and, of course, Sue Ann's great team in the back from Blue Heron. I need all of the speakers, please. If you guys have to write it down, do so. We have beautiful Emily and Risha, and we would like all of our speakers, honorees, and warriors, and sponsors to head over to Studio F between now and four o'clock to have your photograph taken. It's what we do every year, so we can really have a wonderful opportunity to use those pictures in the future. Studio F. Um, and then, quick housekeeping. We'll have four Q&As, or we try to have four if everybody's on time. Uh, you'll see a timekeeper. Um, Miss Robin in the front, will you stand up, please? And then we're going to have Sharon and Andrew help. So what we do is every speaker is aware of the time they have allotted. Please look at the agenda if, you're, if you've forgotten. And we ask you stay to your time because if you don't, someone like Eric at the very end of the program may not have his time. So Robin, Andrew, and Sharon will show speaker cards when you have one minute, uh, 30 seconds and next speaker. Uh, we don't do uh, introductions. It's, we have so much uh, in the way of content. So we urge you to look at your program for the bios. They're all in there. And uh, my interns did a beautiful job combining all of those. Uh, silence your phone. I, I, hopefully I have mine off. Um, lunch, 12.20 to 1.20, right around the corner. It makes it so easy. And of course, they um, meet the speakers and uh, reception and dinner. Earl is selling photographs, posters, excuse me, to that benefit ADIO, and I believe the set suggested donation is $20, um, and that includes a mailing tube, and he, we do have uh, posters from the first, uh, second, and third badges posters. Um, I'm not sure what I've forgotten, but somebody will certainly tell me. I'm going to quick uh, um, later on, and then I'm going to snap a quick picture. But um, I don't want to, hey, Raja. Dr. Flores, um, I would like to take an opportunity to ask my daughter, please, to come forward. Please, Emily. Um, she shares a very big part of me all year long. And some, sometimes I'm a tough mom. There's a lot going on. But she always comes. She shows up with love and passion. And thank you, Emily. <laughs> thank you. Emily. 